forefathers came Some seeking adventure Some bound in chains Through battles waged and fought Through victory and pain By test of their courage Our freedom was gained In homage to those gone before us us, The heroes of lands in the Welcome, welcome brothers, welcome sisters, welcome to our program on target. And remember, as soon as we start this program, you can pick up a telephone and give us a call. We never have a subject matter. We speak about anything. Politics, religion, socio-economic issues, any issue trending, any topical issue of the day. But most important, you can interrupt us at any time with your own subject matter. The number to call is 4420175. Yesterday, my brother raised an issue about the bell. I thought he associated bell with slavery. And I thought it was so important that maybe I should start with the bell. The earliest archaeological evidence of bell did back to the third millennium BC and is traced to the Yangshu culture of the Neolithic China. You know, China in the Stone Age. So the bell has ne not necessarily anything to do with slavery. The pottery bells later developed into metal bells in West Asia and the first bells appeared a thousand years BC. I think this is very, very important because we seem to be walking around with slavery on our shoulder. Black people in the Caribbean and the Americas constantly walking around with slavery on their shoulder, making every excuse and blaming it on slavery. I believe that we must understand that the European went to Africa and get slaves because of economics. Not because they hate black man or they like black man. Because of economics. China is in Africa because of economics. Russia is presently in Africa because of economics. Everybody recognize all the developed countries. Recognize the potential of Africa. The resources of Africa, the human resource of Africa. Africa have the most young people in the world. The Catholic Church is growing fastest in Africa. Just now we're going to have a black pope. So we have to understand, slave. We have to stop walking around with slavery. The ringing of the bell has absolutely nothing to do with slavery and ringing bell is a joyous thing so we must get that clear and the second question he asked me about education i believe our children must be well educated multi-skilled multi-talented flexible and endowed with the characteristic that gives them the competitive edge on the market. And my brother wants you to know what I mean by that. Well, anybody will tell you the way out of poverty is education. Education is the single most important factor in helping to change and develop one's life. And a child is a gift from God. A woman is a vessel. She accepts God's gift. She keeps it in her womb, in her belly, in her abdomen for seven, eight, nine months. Every time that baby moved, she felt it. The bond a woman has with a child, no man could have that bond. They could only dream about it. So it is in the interest of mankind 
but more so women, to make certain your child is well educated. It is mandatory that your child enters school at five years. In Grenada, it is mandatory. So we're starting from five. Your child likely to spend 13 and a half years in school before they exit secondary school. And during that time, at the end of the period when your child exits secondary school, I believe they should be well educated. What I mean by that? The minimum education should be five subjects in CXC, or its equivalent, including English language and mathematics. They should be multi-talented and multi-skilled. All of us have talents. But if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. If you don't use the talents you have, you're going to lose it. So it's in the interest of parents to make certain the child is involved in sports. In at least one group in the school. If you live in near the sea, your child must learn to swim. Your child must learn music at the age of five. Start to provoke your child. Introduce music to your child. You don't exactly know what they would excel in. But if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. So parents is your responsibility and it's your duty to make certain your child is multi-skilled and flexible too. You have churches, we are Christian society. Whether you believe in God or not, send your children to church. They could learn from the church. They will learn to forgive. They learn compassion. Some of the boys send them and see sick people. They behave in bad, bad, bad. If they teach hurt them and they go to the dentist, they're crying. All those bad drawn on the block. Those done. Ask the dentist. Some of them crying when they go by the dentist. They're not accustomed. So if parents start to make certain your boys go and visit the sick, visit the neighbors, let them learn skills. Skills are high paid jobs. So if at a very early age you expose your children, if your man or your boyfriend is a mechanic, let your children learn, your little boys, your little girls, learn about mechanic. They could learn the type of cars that they have in the world. They could learn about the engine. You might find a way to involve the man in educating the child about the job it does. What you're trying to do there is to expand the child's vocabulary. We must do more. We have to do more. The education system in Grenada is not as productive as it could be. 70% of the children that exit secondary school cannot meet the minimum requirement. Some people involved in education should shed a tear that don't go. And parents, you're responsible. The government is spending 11% of the GDP on education. The schools are in a better condition today than any other time in our history. Teachers are better educated, better trained, and better paid than any other time in our history. What do you want more? Electricity, telephone, water, and internet. We second to none in the Caribbean better than most and comparable with the best the ministry of education and the social department they claim that there is no one in grenada no child no man no woman no politician could say that they cannot send their children in school because they don't have the basic requirement i have been saying that on the radio for seven years Hoping to get somebody to challenge them. So what is the excuse for your child not doing as well as they could? 
We could have accepted 50% passing, but not 70%. That's a disgrace. Ask any businessman if they are operating at 30% in the country. So our children are leaving school. When we say them as endowed with the characteristic that gives them the competitive edge, that you are manners, that you are respect, that you learn to dress properly. If your boys put tattoo all on their face and your girls put tattoo all around their neck, in parts of the body that are easy to see, some people may not employ them. One look. One look. So it is important that you understand that. But you might differ from my definition. I believe by the time you're 20 years, 18, 20 years, 22 years, a child should have two years higher training. Whether it is in agriculture, whether it's in mechanic, whether it's a bachelor's degree, in whatever field. There is no excuse today. In yesteryear, we could have said without crime, without telephone, without our food, with the road done good. Grenada have the best network of roads in the entire region. And the quality of the roads is comparable in the Caribbean. In addition to that, you know Grenada have a lot of landowners, perhaps more landowners than anybody in the region. So our children have access to land generally. And we have freedom galore. The mere fact that I'm on radio, you know how free we are. We have about 30 radio stations that receive license. Some of them come and they go off the command. About 30 or more. And we have internet galore. So we have no excuse except poor mentality and the wrong attitude. Color. That is what I mean by well-educated. And we have to stop walking around with slavery. Everybody trying to make an excuse for not performing. And every politician in Grenada have done a relatively good job where education is concerned. Obviously, you have some that are better than the others. Some politicians can even win a seat. But you have Gary introduced 28 schools in 13 and a half years. St. George's University, technical education, pre-primary education, independence of Grenada. Maurice Bishop had a number of people who did university studies. We have a call on the line. Caller, welcome. Good afternoon. Yes, my brother. Well, sister, welcome. Yeah. Mr. P. Avanis, and I decided to call your program to let the people know what's really going on. Now, I put two stickers on my van. With um, the candidate for Senate is not West Miss Delman Thomas. And Mr. Player, you know, this morning, when I go to my vehicle to go to work, the person that five feet, like them that buy that van for me, they ripped down one of my stickers. This, this sticker was completely ripped off on the one side of the van, and they throw it in the bin right close to the van, Mr. Player. I live in paradise, in the junction opposite the shop and that is where I just parked that black van but what they don't know when I check my camera they big problem you see something they see you and they feel you simple and they could go away doing things and tampering with your property that person will be in real problem and I hope they hear me now and who hear him could tell them that Thank so you could come and apologize quick well he'll be apologizing mm. because I don't want to find out now put it in my place in my pot in my pocket no way the full pressure, Mr. Pay. Full pressure. Because now it's a very serious open. Tampering with somebody vehicle in first case and ripping in what you, what you see they have on it. This one don't belong to them. You understand? And that's disrespect. At the end of the day, everybody knows NMP and NDC. When I put the X, when I put it on election day, they go come and remove it too. Eh? Thank yes. You, Mr. Pay. Yes, thank you. And people have to cool down the momentum. And it depends on the leaders to help cool down the people. Cool down. When on the 23rd, you go and vote in a little booth, and you could vote secret. 
and you're going to vote for the side that you want. And if your politician makes sense, they're going to win. And if people don't believe they make sense, they're going to lose. That is why some politicians are so successful and some cannot survive one term. Simple. It doesn't matter how much briefcase or certificate you have. If you don't have political sense, you will not succeed. And we must not remove the posters of the different politicians. There is a significance in putting up the posters. It reinforces the information. Some people don't make up their mind who they're voting for. So sometimes when they watch the poster, they say, I think I like this one. Some people don't like to lose. So they vote for who they think will win. And the campaigning is last minute campaigning. Is like last minute study when you're going to do an exam. You have five years to study, you know. You don't study. But two nights before exam, you're setting up every night. But sometimes that helps you. Particularly when you're doing 2,000 objective type, you might succeed. You might get a few additional votes. And in this election, it was second. First, pass the polls. So one vote is important. So the both sides must be permitted. Leave the posters up. You have NDC, you have NNP. I understand they have a new group. I don't know the name yet. But when they come, they might put up posters too. Leave them. You might have people independent. Leave them. We have one of the best democratic system in the region. And our electoral process is second to none, is the best. It is free, it is fair, and it is free from fear. No matter when you hear politicians criticizing the system, don't worry. Them. If they had enough evidence, they'll take the matter to court. They're only jumping up, jumping up. So we have a good system. And welcome, Carla. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, my brother, welcome. Yeah, well, following up the political drama as it stands right now, there is something strange I find going on as it relates to the Imani. I remember a number of elections gone by, the Imani was pounded upon heavily by the opposition. And it was like they were degrading the Imani and seeing them as like a waste of funds and government using the Imani for voting purposes and all the different things. But I find eventually they start respecting the Imani. A number of respect has been shown to the Imani. I, I haven't heard they said anything on the platform about the Imani anymore. They seem to like recognizing that the Imani is human beings just as the public servants in this country or any other important people or persons in this country. So I realize they start showing a level of respect, high level of respect, and not saying anything to really bring them to the ground anymore. But I realized that they learned that Imani has a lot of power behind them. And that they didn't respect that before. So they start recognizing it and showing a high level of respect at this time. I congratulate them on that one because they, like, they come into the senses when it comes to human beings. Because you know the way they behave and call people all kind of a name that just doesn't suit a human being and doesn't even want to show respect to people was what was responsible for their being defeated a number of times. Something I've been looking at. And, you know, Green Agents have to be very particular about Grenada. Not that there's no political party for say when, because you love a political party. But if you really love a political party, it should be really for the sake of your country. Because that, that political party could eventually end up in government and govern the affairs of this country. And not too long ago, we see that the NDC quickly form a party, a group together. Well, the party exists long, but... We see that a, a shuffle in the, in, the, in the number of people that should be candidates. That is within the last seven months. And they say they have a new group. It's not the old one, so people shouldn't judge them on what they had before. Judge them on what they have now. So that is where I'm speaking about now. You could tell me that you put a group together within seven months. And you call yourself a serious politi political group. 
and the people should consider you as serious enough that they should vote you and give you the reign of governance that you should take care of the affairs of this country. But what I want to tell these guys and them, if that should ever be, the people that really choose and believe that should be the case, there have to be mad people. Because up to this day, this party not quite together as yet as a party when it comes to the number of people they have as candidates. They haven't sat yet and looked at Grenada and see what could be work, worked out in a strategic way to take care of the affairs of this country. Because they were hurriedly put together. Because remember, the, the, oppos the, um, the leader of the party was put there last November, an election call right about this time. So he was the first one that put there, and the rest come after him. So in a serious way, if you really want a political, a political party that really, really and truly serious about being a government in this country, could never have been in the last five or six months. You must have been there sometime before that, and sit down and look, have a good look at what Grenada is all about, what is Grenada need, and look at new, new ways of bringing things into this country. Not saying it on a paper, you know, but sit down and plan it out and look at Grenada in all aspects before you could speak about being government. Because I think Grenada is mo just something deserve much more than just a party with a pretty color and a lot of nice big talk. That just cannot work. And I believe the Canadian people, if they're serious and remembering the history very well, who is this NDC bunch of people? As they say, they come with a new group. They came with a, with a group in 2000, no, sorry, 1990 to 1995. And that party in government never able to stay together like a, a body. They always having this uproar where people resigning, resigning, resigning until the government crumble. They came back in 2008 to 2013 with a new group. They say they come with a better body now. And the same behavior even worse went on. You having this resigning, resigning and fighting for government and then kind of a thing so they couldn't like, they couldn't make a talk. And now they come back again, they say with a new bunch of people, a new set of faces. So I think the history of this party, so that's what Grenada, Grenada might be really thinking about Grenada right now. But the history of this party I always will tell you, it's a serious, serious chance to, take what it, to replace could be whatever government that is in now yeah. with this NDC traction. It's not an easy one. Yeah. Because they don't leave nothing nice to remember about them at all. At all. Okay. Have a good afternoon, but Yes, my brother. Thank you very much. Well, my brother, you made the comment on the Imani program. I, I was, I'm somewhat disappointed in a lot of our professionals. Because sometimes when you have a program, and I said before, the Imani program is the best program that has been instituted in Grenada in the last hundred years to address the challenges of our young people who leave school without the minimum requirements, the, the competitiveness on the job market. We have a caller on the line. Caller, welcome. Yes, my brother. How are you doing? Good, man. Um, first of all, I would like to um, let the people of the Northwest constituency know that tomorrow evening, the Honorable Delma Thomas and her team will be in the Monlong area at 6 p.m. So all are invited, people of Broad Grove, you know, and surrounding areas, let us attend the meeting to hear the plans the, the, lady, the lady have for us. I know she will continue. 95% of what she had promised has been fulfilled, you understand? And she has the machinery in place to continue to develop this constituency. But I, I believe eh, that a lot of people, you know, there is some people that want to remove government for personal reasons. A man, and, and the, the wrong reason. A man to get a passport, a diplomatic passport. He tell himself, well, look, he going to oppose the government and try to remove them. A man, to, um, there is a man that has, um, He's not a traveling officer, he's not a farmer, he's not a road officer, you understand? But he wants a concession to bring in a vehicle, you understand? He was told, well, look, you don't meet the criteria, you understand? He wants to throw down the government, you understand? He blame the government for that. So, you know, personal reasons, you know, people looking for their own personal benefits. They look, not that they care about other people, or they care about the country, they care about itself. Yes, my brother. You know, we always have to remember that in a democratic process, one man, one vote. 
and people might have different reasons why they are lying to the party. And nothing is wrong with a man having personal reasons. You know, people might, but even people see the party's philosophy is, would be better in their interest. The party's developmental plan will be better in my interest. If we have a call on the line. Caller, welcome. Good afternoon, Mr. Pe. Yes, Mr. And sir. how are you? Great, man. Mr. Pe, I was listening to the NDC meeting on Sunday, and it baffled me. It really baffled me, Mr. Pe. I heard the leader of the opposition is saying, he's saying he wants to build 500 homes in every constituency. He's going to make all temporary workers permanent, and all public workers permanent. He's going to, he's going to pay by fortnight, pay everyone by fortnight instead of monthly. He's going to pay the public workers their pension. My question is, Mr. Plain, I hope you could answer me. How is he going to fund this? How is he going to pay the people monthly? The one in Grenada. How is he going to do that, Mr. Pay? Where is he getting the money from? They already said the Treasury haven't got no money. Where is he going to get that money from? Why is it, why are they trying to fool people? Right? Isn't there hope? You have to ask yourself how many money the country is earning. Monthly money. How much is it? Is it, it, is it color? Money? When somebody, even in your own home, if you see government as your home, there are things you might want to do in your home, but other things will get compromised. So if a man wants to buy a car, he might say, well, I have to buy this car so I won't fix the, the um, kitchen. I won't buy the stove. I won't buy the fridge. I can't educate you. I can't send you to school because I have to buy my car. Sometimes your wife can't do she here again because the man has to buy a car. So in government, Ability to do anything could be relative. If the, if the government want to do a certain program, they may cut social program. Mr. Blaze, retrench right. workers and cut social program. Yes. And Mr. Brizan did the same thing. So maybe he could do it by cutting social program. Well, who's going to lose out? Well, it is, is, is when whose they interest they yourself? They send all home. They send all the money home. I see people, all the truck drivers and them, construction workers, they couldn't get any job. Some of them, they used to protest. They said the truck is standing there and grass is growing underneath it, right? Because the country went right down. So we, we the NMP is doing so well already, and they're going to build better than before. Did you? And them young kids coming now, and they're depending on that. Some of the kids, they're not educated. Speak a language that they should understand. And that's what they want, Mr. Pia, listen to you again. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. A lot of time we must read the fine prints. We must read the fine prints. When you go to doctor and the doctor gives you a prescription, if you could read and write, you must know what the doctor write. The doctor must not write prescription for you and you can't even tell your little child to Google and see what is the Google scholar is saying. So when a government say they could do something ability to pay is relative the government could always cut social program the government could raise taxes right now we don't pay taxes on nis pension and government pension you don't pay taxes on it but the government could put tax on that the government could cut social program i was disappointed in the level of attack that came on the imani program we have a call on the line. Caller, welcome. Well, Mr. Pierre, yeah. I, listen, I, listen, I listen to NDC rally and so on and, and Sunday. Just a little thing before I go to Mr. Stanton's point. And I could tell you the honest truth, you know, I line, I really get some kicks. Uh, one Mitchell versus the next Mitchell in talking about it in terms of this, this Susu. Bank does fail, but not Susu. And Susu and just the, one Mitchell tell the next Mitchell, well, take it in here. You know, mm. it, uh, it was so comical, you know, and not condemning anybody because that's how politics does be you know but it was really i think that was a very smart way of answering keith mitchell but not that my substantive point is that i see the government get a, 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 a ct scanner in terms of our uh, think some memorial trust give them the scanner and i it's a good thing because for you to go to, to the different places to get that um service done is thousands of dollars trust me 
And it seems to me that the CT scanner that the government gets is a new one and it's brand new, up to date. I think it's three, three or three of that in the, in the, in the um, region. In, in the region. Now I want to call on the government and please don't attack. If all you could attack me for the one because I'm a Grenadian. Please ensure that that, that because that is a very important properly topic. maintained. Th thank you. I agree with you too. Oh, 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 you, oh, you know it's that don't make you mouse with this thing. Exactly. Yeah. Watch and always make sure that it's working and it's working and it's functioning properly. And you see this thing about bringing in people all the time, bringing it in. I think this thing should stop, Mr. Pierre. What they'll have to do, probably they should have even get people all now to trade because that CD scanner was there over a year. And it should have been done and they should be preparing for it. And I'm calling on the government of Grenada. It's time all to take responsibility for health because health in this country is not good. So what you'll have to do instead of bringing in people when the, when the problem, when there's a problem, because obviously it's a machine and it will break down at some point in time. Must service too. It must service. To send on foreign exchange to bring in people, all kind of things, so it's on taxpayers. And you know people say government but disappear, they don't understand it's, it's, we are the taxpayers that support and everything and yeah. paying all of the people's salary. So we want local people, train local people, send local people abroad, properly qualified people to be able to maintain the CT scanner and to operate it and have more than one person. So if one sick, the other one there, and have it proper function because right now, I remember sometime last year or this year, a big thing was on the x-ray machine wasn't working. You remember that big, 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 big yeah. announcement? And this is shameful and shocking. So I'm not saying it any malicious way because this government... I agree with you. I agree with you. It's one of the challenges that we have in maintaining the equipment. That yes, have. and so I'm, I'm saying, say, I know people are going to come and... You, you, I, you can't bother with that. Yes, yeah, so I'm all on the way. I'm calling the government to have it orderly and properly done, maintain and function. So the taxpayers of this country who are actually put in the bill, got income from all your pockets, will be able to get a proper service and you would have no um, saying all the time or, or, or um, um, notice that the x ray machine is out and this machine is out because it is very costly to do this thing. So I compliment them, but you have to take control of it and make sure that it's properly maintained and function. So the taxpayers of this country, the poor people, and us, and me, and you, and Mr. Pei, I know your business, will be able to... And Mr. Poor Man, too. Right. Have proper use of it. This is all that I have to say. So who exercises their business? Yeah. All right. Yes, I think this is an important concern. Now, when government have these um, facilities, sometimes we all say train people. Government send people and train. The people don't come back. That is one of the challenges we have in the Caribbean. And it's going to get worse. This war in Europe, Brexit, Europe want people, Canada, all of them want highly trained people. And they're going to take our people unless we have the guts in Grenada and government have the support to ban people, put a ban on them for 20 years as fast as we're training them, England and America taking them. We have a caller on the line. Caller, welcome. Francis, good afternoon. Yes, my sir. brother. Now, Francis, yes, we talk a lot about health care, and I agree it needs to be improved. But the question and the discussion we're not having is who going to pay for it and how it will be paid for. Because right now, you go into our hospital as a patient, you spend five or six weeks. You know, you, you eat three meals a day, nurses to look after you, dietary aid and doctors to look after you. And then when you finish, and then when they discharge you from that hospital, all what you do, you tell the nurses, thank you, and you take one of your hands, it could use it, and you just wipe your pants, bam, bam, and you walk, and you walk out. It cannot work, Francis. This is how it is now. So when we talk about improving, yes, we go, we, it, it needs improving, but who and how it will be paid for? That is the question to ask. Perhaps we should start to discuss this issue maybe a couple of months from now to charge everybody 30% of the income for health and education. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, Francis, this is my most substantial yeah. point. Eh? Listen to this. When the NDC was in office, this was the report card. 40% national unemployment. Credit, our credit worthiness was negative. Over 140 million of unpaid claims in the treasury. National youth unemployment over 60%. 
they sold over 50 million of, of our national assets, you know, to pay salaries, late payments of salaries, unable to pay to the OECS medical fund that allow us to buy medicine cheaper. But with, and now we, we're talking healthcare. Yeah. You know, they had, they kick out CCC and they send home over 3,000 imanis just to mention a few of the downfalls. Francis, tell me eh, how we move from that to now promising hundreds of homes, fortnightly paid workers, making Imanian contract workers permanent, new hospitals. Yes, this false promises sounds good, but how can you do that now when you are telling us that this government has not done anything and this government has failed us in the worst way. I want to know how we move from this miserable economic and financial report card that you left to now promising all these things. And I want to know if this government did not perform and they failed us based on, what, based on your report card where will the money and the funds come from now in order for you to fulfill some of these false and fake promises that you are making to the Grenadian people? I thank Kala, you for time. Kala, yes, sir. you remember what was Winty biggest project? Uh, well, I can't call it, I can't remember it right now. He said uh, to building a bridge from Grenada to Carrick. Oh, oh, Winty. Winty. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you, caller. Yes, sir. The number to call is 4420175. Yes, as I was saying, you have a program in Grenada that over 3,000 people benefited for that, from that program in terms of money. They get money. So between $700 to $1,000 a month. They had an opportunity to get a second chance. We have a caller on the line. Caller, welcome. Good afternoon. Yes, my brother, go right ahead. And to the listening public. First, I want to go straight to the point. The point is, every all news is Ukraine, Ukraine. But America is the cause of the war in Ukraine. Is the CIA influence? The president of Ukraine is an American. It is said that he's an American stooge. Putin know all what's going on in his backyard. President of Ukraine is a, like, he's a remote. He's controlled by them. And Putin has a right to defend the Baltic states. You are said, could, they could, all they could do now is sanction. If they try anything else with Putin, it's World War Three. Russia is not Libya. It is a treaty. World War Three. NATO is a treaty to commit a trust. It is to other country. They bomb, bomb Libya to ashes. Iraq to ashes. Kill both leaders. Up to now, no weapons of mass destruction cannot wrong to justify the modern attraction. NATO tried the best with Assad, but they underestimate its strength. America have, have is real committing real murder in the West Bank, Gaza, for over 40 years every day. Palestinian blood is shed in the streets. Nothing is done about it. NATO and other countries allow USA to run pick a Yago in Venezuela. And he was immediately recognized by almost all the industrial countries in the world. For what Putin will not back down, they could do what they want. He has a right to protect his backyard from American influence. And there is nothing NATO and CIA could do about it. Putin is not Gaddafi and Saddam. Putin is waiting on them. Thank you, Sapir. 
Yes, this is a powerful support for Putin. But Ukraine is an independent, sovereign country with 45 million people. In 1932 33, 13.5% of the population of Ukraine starved. They eat dogs. And it was said that they cannibalized to survive Joseph Stalin's great family. Ukraine gave back Russia the nuclear weapon and they signed an agreement with, with, with Russia to, that they should not invade them. Ukraine is an independent country, just as Finland and Switzerland. Shouldn't they have the right to choose their friends? Why is it all these countries who was associated with the Soviet Union now pre prepare to gravitate more to Europe than them? You see, if we applaud a big country with nuclear weapons, to murder and massacre a smaller country. Then what happened when they start in Africa? We have a caller on the line. Caller, welcome. Yes, caller, welcome. Um, pleasant evening, Mr. Pierre. Thank you very much. Pleasant brother. evening. Yes, great program. Um, I want to get straight into it. Um, the caller before that lady from St. George, the female caller, she called to commend the government about the um, CT machine being placed at the General Hospital to help with our health care. That is development, and that is what you call progress in our health care sector in Grenada, because we didn't have one for the longest time. We didn't have one, and we got in such a short order despite COVID and its setup. I understand her point about training and so on. Valuable, very good. But that caller is an operative of the National Democratic Congress. She supports the National Democratic Congress. She's on all programs talking to the NMP back. You, you cannot deny the, the fact. Program and comment it. And I, but uh, you cannot deny the fact that her concern is legitimate. If yes, we have this scan. People who, who, who don't, people who join in with the NDC or join in with persons with the propaganda or believing in the propaganda that they are peddling, they should, should take a take a sense from that because if she's speaking on two sides of her mouth, yeah, you to see, say certain things. One that of, are good, I, I am then not I one of that NAP is good. I am not one of the individuals who believe that the health system in Grenada is as bad as people claim it. One of the challenge we have with the health system is confidence. We don't have confidence yeah, in our system. The World Health but Organization. If, if people Google. The World Health Organization compliment Grenada for the primary health care program as the best in the region. Yes. That you see, so, so... So I want to know what is the next side proposing for health. They're talking about health and health. We know definitely that Grenada, Grenada um, uh, um, has a good thing going where, where persons don't have to pay when they go to access certain, certain um, services at the, at the clinics or at the hospitals. And if they pay, something is still minimal as compared to what we pay in the developed world. It is quite a, 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 you know, a help for them. And that is and, what we, um, you, Carla, what we need people to do is to talk about the health system in America and the other developed exactly. countries. Because Grenadians yeah. believe that our system don't good. So unless people from the diaspora and those private doctors who making a killing and they want people to say the hospital don't good for them to come to the private office unless our well, journalists could start Mr. to provoke Pierre, them mr Pierre, i took an x-ray sometime um last year during covid and i had to pay like six thousand something us dollars so i want to know as compared to how much they are paying in grenada what what do they want what do they want the government to do again what do they want to raise them and bring them on the table and still minister come and take the extra The question is come confidence. Color all what is going on in Grenada is a lack of confidence. So much of people yes. saying Grenada to asunder. Imagine an individual. We believe in our own self. Imagine a lawyer was saying that they suppressing well. voters in Grenada. Imagine a lawyer gone on the media and saying he see the worst suppression of voting in Grenada. Yeah. This is a problem. We have to sometimes challenge these individuals. 
know. Yes, yeah. yes. People need to listen to them carefully. And Grenadians are smart. If there's the the they, they claim to be very smart as as we always say they are, they need to show that on election day that they would have listened and and, and um thing. And the next thing um and make the right decision. What I want to to also talk about is um. I look, look at all the political meetings online, um, on Facebook, and I know definitely right now there's a lot of propaganda being peddled, and the NDC is doing over, going overtime, they're spending overtime. The NMP need to also counteract that, because they know the, they know the, the programs and the plans and the projects that, that, um, that NMP have, have done, has done over the years. They need to counteract that, because people quick, tend to believe the propaganda very quickly or easily. As compared to the facts, and and the facts need to be expounded on 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 the grounds, as well as when the, the different ministers come to speak, we want to hear a lot more about what they're doing. Oh, I think the NDC strategies they're calling for us to hear plans, but they, because they want to run away with the plans of the NMP and then to to turn it around, as just how they turn around that um, advertisement from um, from Miyamot, that that Miyamotli convention um, speech, and the one from from Jalen, the the Sokomona King there and said, um, we need a change. I want to know if they so need a change, let them go ahead and get the change. 2008 was just a smoke. The fire is yet to come. 2000 and 2022 will surely show them who the ununited NDCs are. They, this party would never get together. They will never get together. They have a unity meeting last week in River Sally. Last Sunday is because they want to tell people that they're united. They're not united. But election, so election is on the 23rd. Party. So both parties have to try to do the best in the field now. Huh? Yeah, well, um, they have to try yeah, what to I do want the best. to hear more, a lot about more, is uh, some of the plans of the NMP. I know definitely that the candidates are smart. I know Dr. Mitchell is smart. His strategies are smart. He knows when to apply them. So um, I'm, not, I'm not afraid of that. I know definitely that whatever plan he's coming with would be solid. And it wouldn't be no pie in the sky plans for Grenadians. It would be okay. something realistic. It's something that they would walk towards. If they tell you they give you 100 days to work on this, they will definitely walk towards it. They have done it in the past, and they will do it again. Let's go. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, we, we always have to respect the opinions of another. Now, opinions are not facts, but they're opinion. And sometimes, in small countries like ours, we suffer immensely because of technical talents. As soon as an individual government sends people and train, Cuba, Cuba on a blockhead for over 60 years. Cuba give train Grenadians, the Grenadians live and go in America. We train our nurses, the gun in England. We have a caller on the line. Caller, welcome. Good yes, caller, welcome. You made a statement just now, eh? And that's been bothering me for a while. Which one? Um, the one that, um, like you're sending, the government sending the people to train. Where are there some of them today? They are not in Grenada, they are trying no, no, yeah. to develop other countries and that just keeps bothering But that's one of the challenges of small countries. Oh. And it will get worse because Europe want people, Canada want technical people mm -hmm. and they could pay them more than us that's it the grenada can't completely pay but mr pierre if we continue working together and building grenada we could make it also of course of course but we don't want it we and we have to teach our children that yes yes all they're thinking about they're going and, and, and they're getting scholarship to go free scholarship they're paying everything for them why some people so well, I believe that government should put a ban of 20 years. Anytime you give somebody anything more than a secondary school, I yes. say put them on a ban for 20 years. I agree with you. Otherwise, you can. Otherwise, they will leave and go to greener pastures. We don't say no, you don't want to, but eat little and live long. Yeah. And it could help develop your own country that some of the people only come And you to see, we're country. running down Grenada so much. And yeah. it's not justified. When you talk about electricity, telephone, water, internet, roads, the, the, the tax threshold. Mm -hmm. So our people grow up believing they can make it in Grenada. That's it. And that is why we need people from the diaspora to tell us. Come out more yeah. Hope, more yeah. 
You understand? Yeah. You go there, you, you, you help yourself. And, and watch me, you don't have people that go and they constantly help in Grenada and here. But you have some who just run constantly, running down, running down Grenada. Yeah. Come on. Thank you. Yes, sir. The, 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 the sister made the comment about the CT scan, and it's a legitimate comment. If you notice, electricity company, based upon what they were saying on the radio, they have the um, engine, or how you call it here, but they are aligned with the company that make it. And in, to, in today's society, you could service a number of things by getting information away. So this, we don't know what the government arrangement is. We have a call on the line. Call a punch. Uh, after Mr. Pei. Yes, right. Mr. Pei, you know David was saying, we have to be careful how we treat people. And uh, you treat people in that way, somebody is to come, you go, you go, want, you go, you go need it. We have to do good all the time. Uh, yes, we will need do it. Good. So we have to know how we have to treat people. We have to know, we have to respect one another. Because you know what I mean, they were saying, what is so, that what you reap. And many times, when we so weakness, and we don't eat, we don't forget what we do. And then we will see where people pass hand, hand upon us. So then we need to be careful. We pass with hand on ourselves. You have, you have to look at yeah. everyone as, as, uh, as our brothers and sisters. Right? We have to look at we have to respect. A choice, a, a man of age, he, he has own choice, he of age makes his own choice. And I do believe when one makes his choice, we should, we should respect his choice. You might like it, but you should respect. And when you make a choice, people should respect your choice. And I want to say, yes, as Flynn Toki sang a song, we, we, come, we come along, we still have a long way to go. Right? And it is every any country there is development. Development never reach a ma uh, reach a, reach a maximum. There is room for development. As it, as as a as human being, we uh, our lifestyle we develop. But for our lifestyle to develop, we have to do and be always focused on the positive. Positive. Yes, you see something wrong. Yes, we may talk about it. But look at look at the good. Look at the good what is, what is happening. And I always say in life, you know, some them, a man and a lady together, they, they have one, a wonderful uh, relationship. And they come and they separate. You will talk only about the, the bad and give the impression that that one was the worst person. But everyone in the relationship, there is fault. But sometimes they, we have to discuss. When you hear people talking bad about people, we have to shut them up. Yeah, we have to shut them up. <laughs> right? and, and, and I say that to say, when we come to, we say we are patriots. And we love our country. And some of us, we have nothing good to say about our country. Right? We have nothing good. Yeah, we, we have to teach. I, I'm, I'm particularly concerned about the children. When okay. you're saying down the country, you're doing it in the presence of your children. The presence of your children. And you're setting them up. You set them up. Yeah. You, see, you see, I always say, when you have children, and you, you cannot tell me you, are, you have a ch children in a home. And you call them all of the language. And expect your children not to repeat, what, to do the same thing. And how you want to discipline them and respect them when you do the same thing in front of them? And I always say, I always say in life, yes, color, yeah, respect is not mm -hmm. something that we take, we have to unrespect. Yes, and unrespect, and then give a respect. And we have to respect those in authority. And once we as elders respect those in authority, we could be an example for the young people in society. Thank Many you very much. you are quite young, young people, but so of we elders. We're doing the same thing as young people do. So, Mr. Thank you, Carl. I'm just reading this one from Facebook. I found it interesting. Someone with, someone with 11 passes and a, and a degree in sociology and literature is, is in, the, I guess, in the, uh, is in the Imani. Is the Imani the right place for her? Well, the question is, if you have 11 passes, and a degree, and you cannot get a job, why not go to the Imani? Sometimes you get a scholarship one month after. The fact that you cannot get a job and you go in the Imani, once they recognize that qualification you have, sometimes within a month you're in a university. The Imani program gives you an opportunity for a second chance. It gives you some money most important of all, to get some money to pay your bills. It gives you an opportunity to get job training. You have an opportunity to learn life skills. 
There are a number of people in the Imani program that have been to China and the University of the West Indies and St. George's University. Some of them turn teachers. So if you have 11 passes and a degree and you can't find a job, I think you need to learn life skills. Because anybody have a degree in Grenada that can't find a job, something is wrong with it. You could be underemployed, but you could find a job. And because of the fact that Grenada have the most landowners, and some people is the three bees they have on the land, bamboo, balije, and bokano. If you have 11 passes, ask that person if their parents don't have land. Sometimes you're surprised to know supermarkets may want you because you could help them do their accounts. That person will want to fish because we need more university graduates fishing. Japan finish fishing with sonar and computer technology. Some of the individuals in Grenada using the Cuban tech next day. So if you have 11 subject and a degree and you can't get a job, come in the Imani. They're going to fix you up. They're going to rearrange you. They're going to teach you life skills. They're going to help you to understand. And we have room maybe for one color just to punch or we round up at this time. I think the, we, we responding back to the question that we promised to answer was about the bell. The bell has nothing to do with slavery. Grenadians and black people stop walking around with slavery on your shoulder. And secondly, we must do more to educate our children. We must have better results in schools. The poor results we are having in schools is contributing to the dilemma of the competitive competitiveness on the job market. The whole, the whole Caribbean is like that. Of the 30 countries in the world with the best education system, none of them are black countries. None of them. So it tells you within our black society, we need to be more productive. I believe the challenge we have is not content is low productivity in our schools and our parents, particularly our women, you're not hungry for education. I say you, because the hand that rocked the cradle ruled the world. And you can change things. And 60% of the household are led by women. And even those that are led by men, a significant percentage the woman have veto power. And we're back with you tomorrow, between 12 and 1, as we give you an opportunity to punch. Unite us, a strong